who's connecting now to the MAPS assessment launch of the, the assessment of Greece. Um, this webinar um, is being hosted by the MAPS Secretariat um, and we've organized it in collaboration with the OECD, which carried out the assessment. Remember that we um, would be happy to have at the last part of the um, webinar um, questions and answers. So submit your questions via the Zoom chat or on social media using hashtag MapsGreece. I'd like now to invite to provide some opening remarks, Mr. Janusz Bertok, Deputy Director at the Public Governance Directorate at the OECD. Janusz, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Nicola. And on behalf of the OECD, I warmly welcome all of you to this event, launching the MAPS assessment of Greece. I would like to particularly welcome uh, Mr. Vasilikis Kartsouni from the Hellenic Single Public Government Authority and Mr. Theodoros Galanis from the European Commission from the DG Reform, the colleagues from the Greek Public Administration, and all of you today's session jointly organized by the OECD Infrastructure and Public Procurement Division that conducted the assessment, and also the MAPS Secretariat hosted in the OECD. As you know, the methodology for assessing procurement system, the MAPS, is an internationally recognized tool. It's a universal tool that assesses procurement systems as a whole, including the regulatory, institutional, efficiency, operational, and the integrity aspects. It involves an, an, an independent quality assurance mechanism coordinated by the MAPS Secretariat. As we will see today, it's really a truly universal uh, instrument, and this is applied universally, including OECD member countries, previously Norway, Chile, and today is the launching of the Greek MAPS assessment. The MAPS is a thorough and ambitious process, and I commend Greece for taking this important step and thank the support of the DG reform from the European Commission. The OECD team has worked in the past years to develop a detailed assessment of the Greek procurement system, and the results have already paved reforms. In fact, the OECD has long-standing history in supporting Greece's public procurement reform. Since the task force for Greece in 2011, so this was 12 years ago, and we have been observing notable progress over the past decade, streamlining the legal framework, creating the single authority for public procurement, introducing a review body for public procurement, launching the e procurement system, the platform, and advancing further centralization and efficiency. So reform activity has not halted in the recent years during the COVID pandemic. In fact, what you observed several reforms have happened during the course of the assessment. For instance, the institutional landscape has been streamlined with the merger of the procurement regulator with the procurement review body. While many improvements have happened, and this is very well documented in the next assessment, this report also shows the avenues for continuing this journey of making public procurement truly a strategic governance tool in Greece. A streamlined institutional setup and effective governance mechanisms are critical to enact procurement policies and deliver results. Greece could benefit from a fully integrated, interoperable, open, and expanded e-procurement system. This would strengthen the transparency, access to opportunities, and allow better monitoring of the procurement performance, a stronger capacity and professionalization of the procurement workforce are also necessary to unlock the benefits in terms of very for many strategic use of procurement. And naturally, integrity underpins all of these efforts. Public procurement represents an essential lever for governments to tackle challenges, including global challenges, such as the green and digital transition. This critical role of public procurement has been highlighted in the Greek recovery and resilience plan. Hence, a fit for purpose procurement system capable of delivering is needed now, more than ever. 
I encourage the Greek authorities to continue this journey towards an effective, transparent procurement system capable of addressing tomorrow's challenges. In closing, allow me to thank all Greek counterparts, in particular, the single public procurement authority, but also other stakeholders, in particular, the General Secretariat for Commerce, the Center Coordination Body for supporting the MAPS assessment. I also thank again DG Reform for the European Commission for enabling this assessment through the technical support instrument of DSI. I wish you all a fruitful event and look forward to the discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janos. And now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Theodoros Galanis, Policy Officer at DG Reform, to provide his opening remarks. Theodoros, you may take the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, apologies, because I'm actually in the Riga airport, so maybe you could be hearing some strange noises. Uh, again, apologies for this. So first of all, I'm glad to join and address this very important uh, webinar. I'm also uh, glad to have coordinated from the European Commission DG Reform side this very important technical support project in Greece, the MAPS assessment of the Greek public procurement system. This has been indeed a landmark project, uh, firstly for Greece, uh, since this project came after a long period of regulatory and institutional reforms in the national public procurement system more than a decade. The legislative framework has been reformed, new tools have been added to the arsenal of uh, the contracting authorities, a national procurement strategy has been developed, new entities entered the institutional procurement landscape, and changes have taken place in the respective uh, judicial system. Secondly, it's an important project, of course, for the OECD, since Greece has been the first country in the European Union to have completely MAPS assessment. Greece has invited a very knowledgeable OECD team uh, to thoroughly scrutinize the entire public procurement system to identify both institutional and operational strengths and weaknesses. And finally, it's, it's a very important project for DG reform, since also for us, it has been the first project launching a 360 degrees assessment of a national procurement system with lots of lessons learned. It is also a project to remember since its rollout has not been very smooth. It started, the project has started, has kicked off in summer 2019, continued in a pan pandemic environment and coincided with changes in the institutional, institutional architecture of the national power procurement system, which had quite a blocking, I would say, effect on the progress of the project. So overall, not an easy venture, but we were finally able to declare success. The objective of this project was to examine the national public procurement system and draw some conclusions and recommendations that will feed into a wider reflection on its functioning, take stock of the deep and long-lasting reforms that have taken place over the last 13 years or so, and eventually contribute to the decisions for the future of public procurement in Greece. These conclusions and recommendations would be based on an internationally, on an internationally accepted methodology, the MAPS methodology, involving experienced experts under the auspices and guarantee of the OECD, which underlines the credibility of this whole exercise. This venture, this challenging venture, was diligently and parsimoniously led by Paolo Magin and his team, who managed to deliver under very adverse circumstances. The single public procurement authority and Vasilikis Katsun in particular, and the General Secretary of Commerce have also been instrumental for the successful completion of this project. It is therefore with great pleasure that I see the end of this journey from a DG reform a viewpoint at least, and I address this webinar. As a last point, let me say that we all share the fundamental premise that public procurement is of paramount importance, not only as a tool for efficient and transparent allocation of public funds, but as a growth leverage for member states and the union. I'm therefore confident about the usefulness of this endeavor, of this venture, and the follow-up that will be taken by the authorities. Again, many thanks to Paolo and the Greek authorities for this interesting and instructive journey. Many thanks. Thank you, Teodoros. We now pass to hear um, the actual findings and recommendations of the MAPS assessment. I think just echoing what Teodoros was mentioning and, and also Janos, it's a very interesting assessment in the sense that it's the first country in the European Union to have undertaken this um, assessment using the MAPS methodology. And we would like to hear um, what are the main findings um, and recommendations of that um, work. So I would invite Paolo Magina, Deputy Head of Division at the Infrastructure and Public Procurement Division at the OECD, 
as well as Costanza Caputi, policy analyst uh, at the Infrastructure and Public Procurement Division, to please uh, let us know what you, you found and um, how you did that work and, and what were the recommendations uh, coming out of this assessment. You may take the floor, please. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, yes, and thanks for this opportunity. It's uh, with great pleasure that we are here to present some findings and insights and recommendations into the MAPS assessment uh, done uh, in Greece in, in the recent years. Um, we have a slide deck to, to present to you. Uh, we will go through a bit of the, the project uh, overview and the overall findings. We will also highlight three main dimensions, the institutional reform and governance, the e-procurement and also the professionalization and, and capacity building, which we understand are three uh, key pillars of uh, a sound public procurement system everywhere and also in Greece. And, and finally, we will present some outlook uh, before giving the floor to HSPPA to um, also uh, discuss the way they are dealing with the findings and recommendations. Coming to the project overview um, and the overall findings of the maps, um, just before that, I would like you to um, get a better understanding, those of you that are not so familiar with the MAPS methodology, which, as we know, stands for Methodology for Assessing Procurement Systems. Uh, as already mentioned, is a, an universal tool that um, can be applied to all public procurement systems at any level of government, regardless of their level of development, uh, and for any country or any uh, given institution. Uh, it's also uh, a recognized assessment tool because it uses uh, objective and comprehensive indicators, engages uh, the different stakeholders, and you will see throughout the presentation how we managed to do that in Greece. And uh, it follows a very thorough quality assurance mechanism guaranteed by the MAP Secretariat, which enables a mutual recognition process. So all stakeholders um, verify and validate the findings of a MAPS assessment and rely on the MAPS assessment to follow procurement reforms in a given country or system. And finally, as already mentioned in the opening remarks, it's also a reform tool because it's uh, forward-looking, it's very ambitious, so it can support uh, the effectiveness and efficiency of a pro procurement system. It can also ensure transparency and integrity and encourages a, a dialogue among the different stakeholders. Um, also, looking at the methodology with a bit more detail, the MAPS has 14 indicators and several uh, sub-indicators spread across four pillars. We will talk about the different pillars uh, in this presentation. So pillar one uh, deals with the legal, regulatory and policy framework. And the pillar two looks at the institutional framework and the management capacity. Pillar three looks at procurement operations and market practices. And finally, pillar four, uh, takes into account accountability, integrity, and transparency. And uh, all of these is um, supported by um, thorough guidance and uh, the quality assurance mechanism I mentioned. Uh, we also looked at the country context and uh, do this analysis to provide a, a better understanding how the country is dealing with public procurement. And on top of that, if you would like to uh, understand better the MAPS, of course, the MAPS initiative website has a lot of information but there are supplementary modules that we are also already applying in different countries. Coming to the uh, core maps assessment of, of Greece, this is in fact the, the second uh, assessment we are doing uh, at, uh, uh, in Europe. So we did the first assessment of Norway where we applied the core maps methodology, but also the uh, supplementary module on sustainable public procurement. Um, and um, in fact, we are now uh, partnering with the, the World Bank and um, uh, African Development Bank to conduct a MAPS assessment of, of South Africa. And this is, uh, from the OECD side, probably the 10th the uh, MAPS uh, that we already carried. Coming back to, to the Greek uh, assessment, uh, as uh, already mentioned by Theodoros, uh, of course, the, the project was impacted by the, the pandemic and the, the institutional reforms that we will look at it in more detail. Um, but it's important to highlight that uh, it represents 12% of GDP in Greece, public procurement. So it's a very important tool for governments to deliver on broader outcomes, as in any other OECD country and beyond. Um, we worked very closely with the single public procurement authority, and uh, we were supported by the European Commission, uh, as mentioned. The report is available on the MAPS Initiative uh, website. Um, 
with a bit more detail on the project stakeholders and considering the cross-cutting nature of public procurement and the diversity of stakeholders in the public procurement ecosystem. Uh, it's relevant to see, and you uh, have it here on the slide, the different stakeholders that we engaged from the uh, HSPPA to uh, the civil society. And you will see that uh, we talked to public buyers, of course, the General Secretariat for Commerce, the Health uh, CPB, ECAPI, uh, several ministries and municipalities that were part of, of the sampling that we did under the pillar three of the maps. We also talked to the private sector, business associations, uh, association of Greek contracting companies and so on. We also engaged the control and audit uh, authorities in, in this process, namely the National Transparency Authority, the General Directorate for Financial Audits, the Supreme Audit Institution, uh, and also training institutions. So the INEP, uh, ECDA, uh, and also the Center for, for Law. So you will see that um, the stakeholders were diverse and vast. Uh, and this project, in fact, it was not just about the maps. The maps was uh, the main component and the, the first component of the project. But we were also able to deliver to Greece a very important uh, indicators framework. In fact, Greece was the first country where the OECD applied uh, the new uh, framework for, for managing and uh, measuring the performance of procurement systems. And the third component was looking at um, the control and audit environment in Greece. So there is also a report that was delivered to Greece uh, under this project regarding control and audit. Um, I also would like to echo what uh, Janos already mentioned regarding the consistent reform activity uh, since uh, early uh, 2010. Um, we saw uh, the streamlining of the legal framework in alignment with the EU directives, of course, the creation of uh, the single public procurement authority and the e-procurement system, but also uh, the uh, creation of the review body in 2015, the uh, setup of the National Transparency Agency, which was also very important, and uh, several regulatory and institutional reforms that took place in 21-22 that in fact uh, forced us or somehow impacted the, the way the project uh, was concluded because during the assessment we had to take into account these different uh, institutional reforms. Um, if we look at um, with a, a bit more detail in the, on the next slide, um, an overview of the findings per pillar, I just wanted uh, you to um, get um, the, the main findings for, for each pillar. So on, on pillar one in the legal and regulatory framework, of course, uh, Greece uh, complies with the, the EU directives and there is an overall compliance with the MAPS uh, indicators framework uh, precisely because of that. Um, there is also a, a new policy framework and a, a very ambitious uh, strategy for public procurement in general in Greece and for sustainability in particular that uh, Greece is pursuing now. Uh, but we also saw some challenges related to the what we call the ex post legalization of procurement procedures that were done not in accordance with the stability of the legal framework. And that is something that uh, the report uh, highlights very clearly. Um, on pillar two, uh, we can see that the normative and regulatory functions are assigned, but somehow there is uh, still some fragmentation. The e procurement system is in place but we identified a few gaps in terms of uh, its uh, user friendliness and also in terms of the data usability and the data gaps uh, the maps was able to capture uh, some um, limitations in in this regard uh, also uh, on, in pillar three uh, two we um, uh, looked at um, the centralization function and uh, identified inefficiencies when it comes to uh, else procurement in Greece and the, the functioning of the LCPV, which is uh, also consistent with the findings of uh, other um, institutions and international organizations and even from the, the Greek administration. Um, it's also important to highlight in, in this pillar that uh, the monitoring of the procurement function is now uh, stable and uh, institutionalized, which is uh, an important feature of, of the Greek procurement system. Um, coming to um, operations and practices, uh, we identified some uh, gaps throughout the, the procurement cycle and the uh, high use of the lowest price and the strong prevalence of uh, single bidding. 
and uh, we also uh, looked based on the sampling that uh, the tendering and award processes were uh, very slow and payments were done uh, late and, uh, and not in accordance with the, the contract uh, conditions. And um, while Greece has advanced a lot in terms of strategy for sustainability, there are still, uh, in terms of implementation, there are still some gaps uh, in terms of um, mainstreaming this sustainability across the different uh, procurements. Um, on the positive side, we see the um, access to uh, uh, SMEs, to, to the public procurement uh, opportunities as a, a, a positive um, uh, outcome of the, of the recent reforms in Greece. And finally, uh, regarding Pillar 4, transparency, integrity and accountability, there are still some weaknesses in, in the control framework and some shortcomings in terms of the overall anti-corruption framework when applied to uh, public procurement, of course. Um, there is still limited support in terms of um, integrity for procurers. Um, there is still some lack of data and statistics and some limited effectiveness in, in follow-up uh, on, on disclosures. Uh, but uh, it's good to know that some of the, the findings of the maps are going now to be addressed in a new project that we are having on uh, risk management uh, with um, Greece that uh, the OECD is leading under uh, also support from the EU reform. Um, I will just like to highlight the institutional reform and governance before giving the floor to my colleague Costanza. Um, so as mentioned, Throughout the project, there were major uh, procurement reforms that occurred during the assessment period, namely um, a very important regulatory reform, uh, a new law that was published in March 2021 with the objectives of increasing the digitalization, lowering the thresholds for a procurement, but also the simplification of uh, the, uh, the low value procurements and increasing uh, the thresholds for direct awards. Um, but that uh, originated a reform of the entire procurement system that had to be taken into account during the, uh, the assessment and the application of, of the MAPS uh, framework. Um, on the other hand, there was also a, a very important institutional reform that took place one year later in March 2022, um, which merged the uh, former uh, SPPA with the review body IAP. And that um, originated um, a new single uh, public procurement authority with uh, increased competencies, as we can see in the next slide, um, but uh, also created um, some challenges in terms of um, applying the assessment consistently over the years. Uh, that's why the assessment started uh, in late 2019 and was only concluded uh, last year. So just a brief overview of the new uh, HSPPA. They have the regulatory normative function, and uh, Vasiliki can, can talk more about it. But uh, of course, they are the policymaker. They are in charge of developing and promoting the national strategy, policies, and actions on public procurement, improving the legal framework, and monitoring the compliance uh, of uh, public bodies and, and contracting authorities. On the uh, other hand, they have the review function, which is also interesting to understand how these functions are combined in the same institution. They are the first instance review body for procurements above 30,000 euros. And they have um, a strict um, decision-making uh, timeline which, with 60 days for making decisions, which uh, I'm sure it uh, puts uh, some pressure uh, in this institution. They are financially independent and the directors and chairpersons must have experience with public procurement law. Um, and that is uh, a feature that is uh, uh, in the, the setting up of this new uh, HSPPA. Just um, continuing on, on the pillar uh, one and uh, uh, looking at the indicators, uh, in fact, is already pillar two, but the, the looking at the institutional and, and governance model, um, uh, we just would like to highlight the indicator five um, with the um, we, as I already mentioned, uh, the normative and regulatory function are clearly assigned, but are shared across multiple institutions, and that creates um, sometimes a coordination issue. And uh, the recent regulatory changes um, seem to keep the, the regulatory normative function. And we identified a few gaps related to inefficiencies of the overall institutional architecture, because several ministries still hold primary legislative competence when it comes to public procurement, 
which um, also impedes uh, HSPPA to, to perform their function perfectly. And uh, there is still also fragmentation of competencies in the e-procurement domain with several platforms and, and systems um, that are working together, but still could be better coordinated. And uh, of course, professionalization and uh, um, advice competencies are also fragmented. Um, so our recommendations go towards increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of this normative and regulatory function for public procurement. And I would be um, uh, happy to, to hear Vasiliki on the, the, what uh, Greece is actually doing to reduce this fragmentation in relevant policy areas. And I will now give the floor to my colleague Constanza. Thank you. Thanks, Paolo. So continuing on some of our uh, highlights of this of this assessment, because it's it's quite a thick report. So what we're presenting here is uh, is some uh, uh, yeah highlights. Uh, one aspect that we want to emphasize is e-procurement. Um, and here, uh, e-procurement, of course, is, uh, is a key aspect for delivering efficiency in an e-procurement system because uh, it's of course diminishes administrative burden on the part of contracting authorities and uh, economic operators. It allows for transparency. It allows for access to opportunities. And if done uh, well, it also uh, gives provides data for for monitoring purposes. And all of this is captured by the by the maps methodology throughout several indicators. So we have the the in particular the indicator seven uh, that is specifically looking at e procurement. Um, with, with different aspects about uh, using information technology, the use of the, the system itself and strategies to manage procurement data. But also uh, there's a link towards uh, the indicator 11, which looks at transparency and civil society engagements to, to strengthen integrity in procurement. So here as well, uh, allowing access uh, to data, which can be uh, supported through an e-procurement platform is, is quite important. So with this in mind, uh, what we have uh, identified in Greece, of course, let's start with the, let's say the, the environment. So the e-procurement system is composed of, uh, let's say three uh, different platforms that we've, that we've considered. There's the contract registry KIMDIS. There's a, a actual uh, transactional platform, the uh, ACDs. And then there is a national public procurement database uh, with more uh, statistical information on procurement. Uh, KIMDIS and ACDs are part of a one, let's say, architecture, uh, and and the other platform is is more separate, but still uh, receives input from from the is uh, KIMDIS and ACDs uh, databases. Um, as you. Um, so this is, let's say, a, a, a fairly fragmented environment. Uh, as as Paolo had mentioned already throughout the the project and with the introduction of the of the uh, procurement uh, reform law, there's been an expansion of the procurement uh, use with uh, the threshold for mandatory procurement being lowered to thirty thousand euros uh, from sixty thousand. So that's uh, of course a very positive development because it. Uh, it um, increases the overall use of, of the platform. So in terms of what we have seen uh, of what could, could be improved, as I mentioned, there's an overall fragmentation and some of these two, the platform KIMDIS uh, and SEDs are, are not uh, interoperable uh, with each other. So that creates uh, some, some frictions uh, in terms of user experience. Um, there's also some uh, incomplete functionalities uh, throughout the e-procurement uh, system. So uh, the platform is not covering the full procurement cycle and could be expanded, especially in the contract uh, management uh, part. Uh, and one of the major, uh, let's say, gaps that, that we have observed is the lack of open data format and uh, limitations in the quality of information. So in terms of the, the information that is registered, that is contained uh, through this platform, which is quite comprehensive since you have a contract registry and you have a transactional platform, uh, it is not uh, usable for uh, monitoring purposes, for further analysis, for uh, further, uh, further purposes. Um, and connected to this, if we move to the next uh, slide, 
uh, is of course also the use of these kinds of information for the purposes of transparency and civil society engagement. So uh, there is information published on the procurement system. There's another transparency portal, uh, the Avgeya, uh, but the format of the information it, it does not facilitate civil society engagement. And so we, we recognize this as, uh, as something uh, to be uh, improved. So coming to um, our recommendation here, um, streamlining the e-procurement and the information system, also considering the broader, um, the broader, let's say, governance uh, aspects that Paolo has highlighted before. So taking into account uh, the fact that there's a, a business owner of the platform and there's an operational owner. Uh, so looking at all this environment and, and streamlining this. Enhancing the collection, processing, and storage of procurement data to gather insights into procurement performance. Uh, what I was mentioning, really making this data uh, not only uh, available, but user-friendly uh, user and possible to, to be extracted for other purposes and, and not being, uh, let's say, reliant of, of uh, PDFs that are stored in the system but don't give you further uh, insight. Um, ensure that there are effective mechanisms to uh, in place for compliance with transparency requirements. In some instances, there were gaps uh, also in information being uploaded to the contract registry on time. So that's uh, something to, to be addressed. And overall, uh, facilitation uh, to uh, access to, to overall public procurement information, including for uh, broader civil society groups. And uh, another aspect that we consider very important to highlight is about uh, professionalization and uh, capacity, because this uh, underpins, um, let's say, the practices uh, uh, that occur day to day uh, in the procurement system. And of course, uh, those practices then uh, lead to, to procurement outcomes. So it's critical to have uh, a system uh, that uh, enhances professionalization and enhances capacity uh, in, um, uh, in place. So specifically looking at what, uh, let's say what through, through the MAPS methodology, what, um, what gives us information about, about these aspects and what have we found uh, when conducting the MAPS assessment regarding this, this topic. Uh, so, um, in terms of uh, the the infrastructure to uh, for professionalization, so public pro indicator eight, uh, the public procurement system has a strong capacity to develop and improve. So this looks at training, advice, and assistance, and as well as overall uh, recognition of procurement as uh, as a profession, and also practices. So indicator nine in the MAPS uh, methodology looks at public procurement uh, practices and achieve stated objectives. So here uh, we're looking at what are actually day-to-day -day activities of, of public buyers that inform us about the level of, of capacity. So um, in terms of uh, indicator eight on the status of professionalization and the public procurement system capacity to develop and improve. So here we uh, we observe that there are several bodies involved uh, in professionalization, uh, namely uh, HSPPA and training institutions, several training institutions, as well as uh, activities ongoing um, to uh, for, uh, foreseen action plan on professionalization, uh, that is that is um, highlighted in the public procurement strategy uh, for of Greece. Uh, there's training offers um, uh, in place, but on the other hand, overall we can say that there's a lack of a strategic approach to professionalization. So importantly, the public procurement function is not recognized. Uh, as a specific function. So there's no uh, recognition of, of that. Uh, and also there's no coherent approach to training that has been implemented. Of course, there's actions that are foreseen, the action plan on professionalization, but uh, not in, in place uh, already. 
and uh, and importantly, looking at capacity, looking at uh, the the practices, uh, we see that there's of course quite uh, quite some scope for training and for uh, improving improving capacity, and we see the need for uh, really a stronger professionalization. So just to give you an overview, this indicator, I mean, practices looks at uh, planning, uh, selection and contracting and contract management, uh, going through, let's say, these phases of the procurement system. Um, there are different findings that we have observed. So, of course, uh, there's uh, market consultations that are foreseen by the legal framework. Uh, there are templates that can be used by contracting of authorities. And then as mentioned earlier, uh, on the other hand, uh, limited use of sustainability criteria. And in terms of the, let's say more the, the gaps that we noticed, uh, limited focus on needs and market analysis on the preparation of, uh, of the tender and sometimes challenges in definitions of requirement. Uh, there have been mention of poor planning uh, expressed by stakeholders and also uh, limited evidence on use of uh, outcome-based uh, specifications. Uh, similarly, um, in terms of selection of contracting, um, there is implementation of efficiency tools, notably by uh, the central purchasing uh, body, the, uh, the General Secretariat for Commerce, um, and process of bid a submission and award are carried out in compliance with the law and transparency requirements are broadly met. Uh, and tender committees have been are set up with technical stuff, which used to be a bottleneck, uh, but has been streamlined with the reform law. Uh, but again, uh, procurement documents development sometimes is a challenge for, uh, for officials. Tender specifications uh, may be overly specific in some areas. There's uh, irregularities detected in the choice of procurement uh, methods. There's... Uh, limited use of meat criteria, uh, and then slow award pr procedures compared to EU average. So again, pointing at a uh, need for greater professionalization. And finally, contract management practices. Um, uh, there's um, supervision, quality control, and final acceptance that are, uh, that are carried out by a monitoring acceptance commission. There's contract management system in, in place or some support through ACD's platform, but not mandatory and not uh, much used in practice. And also uh, statistics uh, that limited uh, statistics uh, that can be can be extracted and, and not in a user friendly uh, manner. And um, on the on the gaps side, uh, there are frequent contract modifications. There's a delays in contract implementation that has been observed, uh, payment delays, uh, and in some instances, what we refer to as exposed legalization to unblock uh, payments uh, if there's uh, if this happens, and uh, gaps in compliance with some uh, requirements. So. The uh, uploading of contracts on the contract registry platform only, uh, let's say, two years uh, two years later than what should be happening, uh, and that is a shortcoming in terms of record uh, keeping. So, with all of this in uh, with all of these uh, aspects in mind, uh, we recommend uh, to recognize procurement as a specific function in the public and administration and develop a comprehensive uh, training strategy uh, to train uh, public procurers along the procurement cycle, including on planning, including on using uh, meet criteria, including on using more complex. Uh, procurement techniques and a better management of the contract implementation phase. Uh, also enhancing the skills of practitioners regarding designing procurement documents and technical specifications and uh, including on uh, functional specifications uh, and as well as to mainstream mechanism to monitor uh, contract implementation as well as addressing some uh, payment delays through better digitalization. And uh, with this, some uh, final uh, 
thoughts uh, and consideration from our side before uh, hearing from HSPPA. So uh, public procurement is a, is a priority in terms of the recovery and resilience plan, which sees it as a, as a function that is needed to, to unlock uh, uh, the implementation of, uh, of the recovery and resilience facility. Also, there's a strong alignment between the priorities identified uh, through the MAPS assessment and the Greek National Strategy for Public Procurement 2021 and 2025, so activities uh, that are, uh, that are uh, aligned there. And then uh, we see now that the institutional framework is more stabilized uh, as uh, uh, as compared to while we were uh, during the assessment where, where things were happening. And so this seems to be a good, uh, to put Greece in a good uh, position to carry out uh, key reforms. So with that, thank you. And I hand back to the moderator. Thank you, Kostas, and, and thanks you, Paolo, uh, for, for uh, distilling the main findings and recommendations of this report. As uh, you mentioned, it's a, it's a very thorough report and and uh, i think it was it might have been tough to 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 just take out three main aspects so thanks for for doing that in such a short time i remind uh, all the audience that the report is available on the maps website and there is also a a, a case study um a country case that uh, shows um a very brief summary of um, this assessment uh, also available on the maps website so with that, um, I would like to invite Ms. Vasiliki Scarzoni from the, the board of the Hellenic Single Public Procurement Authority to provide her, her view on, on this assessment and um, what um, the, the Greek government's take on these findings and recommendations. So Ms. Scarzoni, the floor is yours, please. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. First of all, allow me please to extend our thanks to the OECD and to Mr. Bartok for hosting this webinar. I also wish to extend particular thanks to Paolo Magina and Costanza Caputi of the OECD and also to Theodor Galanis of BD Reform for their impeccable cooperation in the last couple of years. As you know, HSP PA is the result of a recent merger between two pre-existing public procurement authorities. Accordingly, the current board of HSPPA has not formally has not formally discussed the finding of the MAPS report yet. In other words, strictly speaking, there is no official HSPPA position to convey today on a point by point basis. So, however, in the 10 minute slot allotted to us, there will be a series of remarks and thoughts by HSPPA members regarding the report, which we hope we will be a good addition to the webinar. First, there is no doubt that the process of cooperation itself with the OECD and the DG reform has been beneficial to HSPPA. No matter how competent one is in the field of public procurement, the interaction with these two institutional who share a wider vision of things is instructive and fruitful. Secondly, the recommendation of the report must to a considerably extent, certain beliefs and intuitions held by the members and staff of HSPPA. So we would say that overall, we see eye to eye on the fundamental of public procurement in Greece. Thirdly, and more specifically, I note that the report's recommendation are boldly aligned with the action identify in the action plan of the National Public Procurement Strategy 2021-2025. This highlights the importance of having a national procurement strategy, that is the importance of setting strategic goals for oneself and of abiding to them. On a variety of themes, the report 
has also identified some legal issues which are important for us too. The problem of retroactive legislation which exposed legalized irregular public procurement procedures. The fact that many different ministries have the competence to regulate aspects of the public procurement the possibility of uh, introducing alternative dispute resolution mechanism, the fact that length procedures appear to be the norm in particular between advertisement of a tender and the signature of the contract, the need to make public publication to keep this applicable to all procurement notice, and the need to fa facilitate access for all to secondary legislation such as delegated regulatory acts. The need for evidence-based monitoring uh, of the system. In addition, we also believe that the professionalization and digitalization are two of the most urgent challenges in the field of public procurement. To that effect, we, got, we gladly note that the OECD leading practitioner forum this year will focus to a significant extent on these matters by following developments in these two cutting edge fields of uh, prof professionalization and uh, digitalization, the Greek state and HSPPA in particular have a lot to gain. We must adopt best practices and we have to emulate those who have succeeded in making public procurement a speedy, efficient field of administrative action. Other issues such as the integration of the e-procurement system, the drafting of a comprehensive public procurement manual and the implementation of integrity measures and rules are more complex and require serious consideration as well as cooperation between several state bodies. Finally, allow me to focus also on the red flags raised by the report in the overview over the compliance with the MAPS indicator. These are in pillar one, deficiencies in the scope of application and coverage of the legal and regulatory framework. In uh, pillar two, uh, weakness in uh, the implementation of uh, procurement centralization in the health sector. In, uh, for example, in pillar three, uh, deficiency in uh, procurement practices at contract management state, in particular the report identified that Greece is the worst uh, performing country in the EU, the EU regarding the time it takes to execute procurement contract an average of 705 days to conclude the contract management phase. And uh, it was in page 95, and it was uh, really very interesting. In Pyral 4, uh, room for improvement in the anti-corruption framework and integrity training. This also refers to a mechanism for reporting prohibited practice and uh, unethical behavior. What most of these red flags appear to have in common is the following. The primary competence to deal with them lies with a legislator and with central government. In other words, as things stand today, there is not much HSPPA can do on its own about the red flags of pillar one, two, and of four, what HSPC could do is bring the above uh, deficiency to the attention of the government and the competent ministries in an effort 
to convince them to introduce legislation accordingly. The red flag in uh, Pyral 3, for example, I think it's another matter, uh, as stated in the report, improve, improved contract management relies on increased uh, professionalization and administrative capacity in the particular field HSPPA in its current status may well have a role to play. The recommendation in pages 96 until 98 of the report must be examined carefully by all public procurement stakeholders of the Greece state with a view to achieving their implementation. It must be noted that HSPPA has already established a working group with the General Secretariat of the Ministry of Commerce to identify means to promote and bolster professionalization. Overall, overall we will uh, think all these, uh, all these conclusions and um, we would like to thank you both and OECD and DG Reform for your cooperation, for your technocratic advice and for your public service. We very much look forward to keep working with you in order to deepen and sharpen our knowledge and handling of public procurement. And we are also open for more suggestions and uh, interactions from uh, our side we expect to come back uh, to you with uh, more ideas and propositions to that effect. Uh, we were working on uh, that side. So thank you again very much. And it was very nice to see you. Thank you, Ms. Cartoni. So, um... I would, uh, we have still a couple of minutes left. I see that there are some uh, questions that we that we could have some time to, to discuss them. So the first one, and I think maybe I would like to give the floor to Paulo and Costanza. Um, it's from Ioannis Pontokidis um, regarding the functioning of the procurement market in Greece. And I think this is related to indicator 10. Um, so maybe if you could if you could briefly mention what what you did there uh, before before asking you um, another question on, on e-procurement. Thank you, Nicolas, and thank you, Vadiliki, for for the um, your comments and feedback on, on the report. Um, it's good to see that uh, Greece is uh, taking it very seriously and uh, looking at it as a way to improving the the functioning of procurement in Greece which we are supporting for the past uh, 12 years and will continue to support upon your, your need. Um, coming to, to your question, yes, the, the MAPS follows a very, um, let's say, detailed um, guidance in terms of um, applying the different indicators and sub-indicators and assessment criteria. And um, for the functioning of the procurement market, we also engaged, as I mentioned, with um, um, some business associations and representatives of the market and um, tried to explore a survey with the economic operators to understand how it was functioning. Uh, we also carried a, a survey with the contracting authorities. Um, so we followed the, the methodology, which is quite uh, detailed. And uh, of course, by applying the maps, we have to, to go through uh, the methodology. Um, and we identified uh, some challenges in terms of access, but at the same time, we uh, recognize that uh, nowadays it's easier to uh, have uh, an, an understanding and visibility over the public procurement opportunities in Greece. Thank you, Paulo. Um, and uh, I have a second question regarding e-procurement, and I, I particularly liked uh, the way you, you presented and Constanza the, the, the fact that e-procurement needs to be seen from different dimensions, and this is why also even from the MAPS methodology, although there's an indicator directly devoted to e-procurement, uh, it touches upon different aspects. Um, and, and you mentioned, for example, institutions, um, how different institutions need to coordinate and do that well for the e-procurement system to thrive. 
you also mentioned about um well the the, the platforms and the different um it systems that are functioning right now in greece and finally also that professionalization aspect related to procurement so my, my question here is um basically in in what you're doing um with greece and also with other countries and and this communication that that you have at the OECD with other countries um what's your take on on change management i think um Ms. Um, uh, the, the representative from from HSPPA uh, addressed that a bit on 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 change management and 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 the importance of of um, working that with the public officers um, related also with professionalization, but in a way that they can um, foster um, the environment for e procurement. Um, how how that applies your your vision from other countries and particularly what you saw in Greece. So over to Costanza or Paolo, if you have any thoughts on that. Okay, I, I was looking at Costanza. Go ahead, Costanza, I will compliment. Um, yes, Nico, uh, I think you're raising a very important point in terms of change management, and it's not something that, uh, let's say, the maps necessarily specifically asks us to, to, to capture, but I think uh i think this comes through in a number of of ways that yeah we haven't necessarily analyzed specifically but if you're thinking of well throughout the the reform of the procurement system there was you know the the thresh, threshold being lowered uh from from 60,000 to 30,000 and and we heard uh that that was of course or in general that uh yeah i mean these are often things where where um officials uh don't jump on it as like oh yes uh this is fantastic rather uh rather this is a new requirement that i have to implement so i think the point that you mentioned to take into account change management is uh, uh i think needs needs attention if i may just compliment and based on the work we are doing with greece in other domains including um, procurement of uh, ict and digital solutions we um, published uh, recently a, a report with the Ministry of Digital Government in Greece that uh, precisely addresses these dimensions, including uh, change management and uh, looks at different ways of establishing coordinated mechanisms for different authorities. And we see now that uh, Greece has a fragmented landscape. Um, so this report clearly addresses um, these uh, ways of uh, looking at uh, change management, including the establishment of uh, PMO, including, uh, you know, development of templates, looking at planning as a, a way of uh, increasing coordination. Uh, so, yeah, th there are several ways of uh, addressing it, not necessarily through the MAPS assessment report, but in, in complementary work that we are also uh, developing with GRIS. Thank you, and I think this is this is a, a a perfect way to to conclude the event. Um, because after a maps assessment and after launching a maps assessment, um, what we all want to see in countries is um for the reports to be used, to be used as a way of uh, prioritizing reforms, to be used as a way of identifying what needs to be done, um, and taking all of these aspects, including change management, but but others that of course are highlighted in the report and that were highlighted here. Um, e-procurement, um, capacity uh, and professionalization, as well as institutional um, management and, and restructuring. So thank you all for attending um, this webinar and thank you very much for the speakers that we had. Um, please see here the full MAPS assessment report available on the MAPS website, along with the rest of information that you may find there, including the country case for Greece. With that, we conclude. So thank you very much um, and have a good rest of the day wherever you are. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. It was nice to see you.